Hello everyone. It's your favorite president speaking to you on a really great day of victory. One week ago, we had something called Super Tuesday, and it was indeed super because we won at numbers that nobody has ever seen before, records in virtually every state. And tonight, likewise. But this one got us over the top. The Republican National Committee has just declared us the official nominee. And so we're the official nominee of the Republican Party, which is a big deal. But most importantly, we now have to go into victory because our country's in serious trouble. We have millions and millions of people flowing in. We have no respect on the world stage. What we say doesn't mean a thing anymore. And to have that happen is unthinkable. We have an economy that outside of certain little areas is doing very poorly. And we have something very, very important. We have a United States military that has to be taken care of. Again, this was a great day of victory. Last week was something very special, Super Tuesday. But now we have to get back to work because we have the worst president in the history of our country. His name is Joe Biden, sometimes referred to as Crooked Joe Biden, and he must be defeated. Our nation is failing. We're a nation that is in serious decline. We've never had a situation like this where we're not respected, we're laughed at, we're considered almost a joke. We're going to turn it around. We're going to drill, baby, drill. We're going to close our borders. We're going to do things like nobody's ever seen before. And we're going to make our nation's economy be the best ever in the world. We had the best economy ever just a short while ago, and we're going to have that again. We're going to have people come into our country, but they're going to come in legally. And we're going to get your energy costs down by numbers that nobody would have said even possible. We have some sections of this country that are paying the highest numbers in the history of our country and among the most expensive energy anywhere in the world. And yet we have more liquid gold, I call it, under our feet than any other nation. Just three years ago, we were energy independent. And now we're going around begging for energy. So we're not going to have that anymore. We're going to have a strong country. We're going to have a respected country. We have to win an election and we should win it by a lot because there's never been anybody worse at doing that job than Joe Biden. So we're not going to take time to celebrate. We'll celebrate in eight months when the election is over. November 5th, I believe, will go down as the most important day in the history of our country. So start thinking about it. Start thinking about your vote because this vote is going to be the most important vote you've ever cast. And again, for this evening and for last week and for all the weeks before, for the tremendous success we've had in this primary, I want to thank everybody. But much more importantly, we have to get to work to beat Joe Biden, the worst administration, the worst president in the history of our country. They are destroying our country, and we're not going to let that happen. Thank you very much. Tremendous amount of things you can cut. Let me be precise. Tremendous amount of things you can do, not cut. Last, not, not long ago, my buddy John McCain passed away. My predecessor friend, who went, he, that's how he ended his career. And what, what, we're, what they're going to do is to ensure a national, really endanger our national security. They're going to expend, a, you know, the, you have to look. Pennsylvania, I have a message for you. Send me to Congress that I can support this right. <coughs> Family for the, those farms for the, and their children. They have children of children to, in, to instigate the. Re those deranged and obsessed never-Trumpers insist that Donald Trump is this terrifying narcissist who wants to be some mad dictator <laughs> and end democracy as we know it. <laughs> Except, of course, he doesn't. For some people, the ultimate goal in life 
uh, has been becoming the President of the United States. Would you like to be the President of the United States? I really don't believe I would, Rona, but I would like to see somebody as the President who could do the job, and there are very capable people in this country. Most people who are capable are not running for office. It, most men are frightened of politics today. It is a shame, isn't it? Yes. It is a shame. The most capable people are not necessarily running for political office, and that is a very sad commentary on the country. They had major corporations, and they had this and that, but they are not running for political office. Yes, yeah, scary, scary Donald Trump. Worse than Hitler, they call him, an ogre, a monster, a fascist, a white supremacist, a racist, except, of course, he isn't. Why wouldn't someone like yourself run for political office? You have all the money that you possibly need. You've accomplished a great deal, even though you are only 34. I know there's a lot of things that you possibly can do in the years ahead. Why wouldn't you dedicate yourself to public service? Because I think it's a very mean life. I, I would love and I would, I would dedicate my life to this country, but I see it as being a mean life. And I also see it as somebody with strong views and somebody with the kind of views that are maybe a little bit unpopular, which may be right, but may be unpopular, wouldn't necessarily have a chance of getting elected against somebody with no great brain but a big smile. And that's a sad commentary for the political process. <laughs> no great brain but a big smile. How wow. on earth, <laughs> way back in 1980, did young Donald Trump know he'd be running against this man? <laughs> Talk about being prescient. A great, gifted clairvoyant. Television, in a strange way, has ruined that process, hasn't it? It's hurt the process very much. I mean, the Abraham Lincolns of the world. Abraham Lincoln would probably not be electable today because of television. He was not a handsome man, and he did not smile. Abraham Lincoln, Ronald Reagan, and Donald Trump. They're my top three. What are yours?